Welcome to the Oakmont, one of the featured homes in the Pennsylvania Street of Dreams. Uh, this home is built by McNaughton Homes, and it's one of the homes that are being featured. Nearly 5,000 square feet, uh, four bedrooms, three and a half baths. Joining me, Tom Martin, right now, as we give you like a little bit of video walkthrough of this incredible home, a short little video of what you're going to find when you tour these homes at Pennsylvania Street of Dreams. What catches your eye, first of all, Tom? The first thing that catches my eye is the uh, architecture, interior architecture. Notice... You'll see it here going into the family room, you'll see it going into the dining room, and then in the, uh, going into the kitchen area. There's a theme of arched doorways. There are uh, narrow ones like the one right there at the uh, wine bar, and there are broader ones in the going into the dining room. But you're going to find this visual continuity. There's just not a whole series of rooms like you might have had in an older home. There is a definite visual flow, not just to the floor plan, but to the, the, the design of the home itself. But, it just makes it feel more comfortable. It makes it feel softer, if you will. It, it just gives it a, a, a more a luxurious sense than just something squared off. One of the things that Mark told us about this home is not just for living, it's for enjoying, uh, you know, a staycation. You know, uh, starts right here with the little room right off the family room. Uh, it's a sunroom, which goes off to a private deck, you know, roofed there's a roof over the deck itself and down overlooking the area you have a fire pit a beautiful area where you can relax through there over to another deck and it's it's just incredible you know one of the things that uh, mark told us about this home is the archways and the huge ceilings uh i, I can't remember the exact height but you know these are not your conventional uh, size ceilings especially here with a floor to ceiling stone fireplace and the thing that will impress the ladies, Tom, is the uh, the kitchen area. Uh, one of the things Mark said about uh, the whole idea, double islands, granite countertops. The uh, double island, just a neat idea. It's not uncommon that you have guests over, with family gets together, everybody congregates in the kitchen. If you have an island, you know everybody's congregating around an island, which will often limit either your entertainment space or your workspace. The thinking here in this home the double island gives you a definite work spot, but it's not separated from where everybody's going to congregate. You'll see that the, uh, the uh, porch is right off the, uh, the kitchen as well. So it makes a great spot for entertaining, makes a great spot for family get-togethers, uh, doesn't crimp anybody's style, and it's just well thought about, about how we use a home. It's just not a space. It's a very thoughtful convenient, comfortable space. One of the things Mark also mentioned, some of the old-fashioned features that Tom and I uh, grew up with. And one of the things here is the pot faucet. You're making a big pot of pasta. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to bring the uh, pot all the way from the sink, but now over the range. Right. You can find these kind of features throughout the house. Those things that you remember from Grandma's house that just made sense, and you, you probably thought, why don't they do that anywhere? Well, you'll see these these ideas that have come back, but you're also going to see a level of craftsmanship that you probably thought of has disappeared over the years. You're going to see work from second generation craftsmen, electricians, plumbers, masons. These people have taken pride. It's a family pride that they put into the homes that you, you get when you come here, get a real good close up look of the kind of work that's got into these homes. It's pretty amazing. One of the things too, along with grandma's uh, old fashioned, as you can see, cameras. Uh, Mark told us about the high-tech features of this house. Uh, this home has cameras built up throughout. You can access them via your smartphone, but the smartphone also controls the climate. It controls the audio system in the house. So if the kids are playing loud music, uh, then you're, you're very, you know, you just hit your phone and turn it down. There were no appliances on the countertops because... Because the, you, what you're looking at now is the pantry just steps away from the kitchen. This will be the home for mixers, toasters, blenders, all those things that clutter up a countertop, that get in your way, that, that reduce your workspace. You'll notice in this pantry, there are electrical outlets. So all those appliances that you just don't want out, they'll be housed here, convenient to your kitchen, but still available to you. They're not in a drawer coming out in the cabinet. They're available to you. Just good thinking. Um, back in the old days too, when Tom and I was growing up, if we had a garage, uh, you know, we, we come in the garage and come in the back area, but now there's an, another area. You don't come in the garage. This is kind of like a, well, I think what Mark called it a drop-off. He called it a drop zone. Drop zone. Yeah. A lot of built-ins, a uh, place for shoes, umbrellas, coats, 
gym bags, all the things that we haul in from the car, it's right here. There's also a separate door here. You're walking through, you might say you're walking through the garage. This is a security door that can be accessed again through your smartphone. It's a, a lot of thinking in the new homes with security measures. That's uh, one of the ideas of the cameras. You could be in your the master suite and here's somebody in your driveway. You can get on your smartphone and see who's in your driveway. Heck, when we grew up, you didn't even lock your doors at night. Today, the world is a little bit different, and that's how this home has been thought about from a, a security aspect. One of the things that you talked about, Tom, and I'm taking a video of it right now, is looking from this area through the kitchen, through the double islands, you equate that to like a painting. Oh, it is. The, uh, as, as the, it starts with the, uh, the floor plan, and then as the interior designers work, they think about what is going to make you feel comfortable, what's going to grab your eye, then it gets to the decorators and the designers, how pretty the place is going to be, how, how does it make you feel? And that's all part of the home. It's, it becomes your home, but it's still, we, in the way builders build homes, they, they create this canvas for you to decorate to your taste, but they give you a very, very good canvas to start from. Now we are upstairs at this beautiful home, this Ms. McNaughton Homes at the Pennsylvania Street of Dreams. And as you walk in the front door, and then you see, this is the view from upstairs as you're looking over the area. And then you see this chandelier, which is that distance all the way down. And Tom, so how's she gonna, how, how are we gonna change the bulbs? How's she gonna clean that thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna even comment on that one. <laughs> But you look at that and say, okay, beautiful idea, now what, when a light bulb burns out or that, that eventual cobweb finds its way in there? It's motorized. So on the wall, a small switch, turn the uh, switch. That whole fixture will be lowered down to uh, eye level at the, uh, down at the floor. Do whatever you need to do. Turn the switch, goes back up, and you're on your way. One of the uh, little technological advances and marvels. Again, we look down to the family area from upstairs. Now we're gonna wow you, especially the women and the men are gonna love this next feature. First of all, a laundry room upstairs, because everybody knows that all the clothes, the kids' clothes, you don't wanna lug them down to the basement or downstairs. So the laundry room is upstairs, huge counter space, sink to do all your, your things. Um, one of the smaller bedrooms, but also when you come in, to the master suite and Mark McNaughton called it a suite that's a retreat um, first of all let's talk about the bathroom you know the things that you saw when you came in and saw this for the first time well obviously the uh, the great focal point is that claw foot tub uh, with that the old uh, fixture again that's the kind of thing my grandmother had a uh, house was building I uh, probably the turn last turn of the century and they're making their way back because they are so elegant. And they, it really sets this tone for this master suite. It, it, it screams luxury. It screams convenience. It, it screams relaxation in the master suite. And we talk about the, the arched doorways. Well, look at the barrel ceiling here. And then how that feeds into the window behind it. It's, everything has been thought about. Carefully thought out. And that begins very early in the design process on what they want this, the homeowner to enjoy, how they want to make this home different than what, they may, what the homeowner may be living in today, or even the new thinking that has not been seen before. Now, the one that made Tom and Mark laugh is the shower, my very white Al Green shower. Uh, double shower, you know, double shower heads. Uh, also, you know, just absolutely huge, luxurious, what you would find in a five-star hotel. And the other feature, that Mark pointed out, heated floors. So when you crawl out of that claw foot tub and your tootsies are nice and warm as they go back to this room. Now here's the other thing that Tom and I like is along with the size of this room, you have a little area off here where you can do some reading. You can uh, sit and relax and just enjoy. But then we come to Tom's favorite part, which is Tom? The coffee bar. This is the spot um, that Wonderful aroma of coffee first thing in the morning that gets your eyes open, gets the heart beating again. It's right here in the master suite. And have your first cup of coffee. Park yourself down into uh, the, this small retreat area. It's just a wonderful way to start or end your day. 
Again, uh, this is the Oakmont. It's a McNaughton home. It's part of the Pennsylvania Street of Dreams. Uh, you can tour this home and find out more about it. Uh, go to pastreetofdreams.com to find out more and also McNaughton Homes. And again, we stress as we talk about uh, McNaughton Homes, building homes in our central Pennsylvania region since 1979, the importance of supporting your local builder because these are the folks you're gonna run into in the store, you're gonna run into the craftsmen. They are all local craftsmen. They build these homes. They are your friends and neighbors and you're gonna run into them. So uh, the builders that are here. We have seven builders who, this is their, this is their event to take their best foot forward and show the public really how well a home can be built and designed. The builders you're going to find here are, again, are some of the tops in the region. Classic Communities, Farinelli Construction, Fred Tidy, Grove Homes, Landmark Homes, McNaughton Homes that we talked about, and Roland Builders. These are names that you know that have an excellent reputation in this market and beyond. And you can see their showcase here over the next uh, couple of weeks. Thank you so much for joining us on the Pennsylvania Street of Dreams, brought to you by the Home Builders Association of Metropolitan Harrisburg.